Hey, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today I'm taking a look at bed adhesion and Orca Slicer. So let's go ahead and get started. One of the biggest challenges in 3D printing, particularly for new users, is bed adhesion. Bed adhesion, some of the biggest issues you face are a unlevel bed and then also not having your Z offset set correctly. Z offset being the distance between the nozzle and the bed. I'm going to link the videos above for leveling your bed and you need to take a look at those. But in this video, I'm going to cover what other settings you can use in Orca Slicer to help with bed adhesion. So let's take a look at these settings and see which ones would help us the most. Now, I've been printing a lot of print in place models that I use to give kids, particularly at STEM events. And so I have this little print in place unicorn that I found believe on Thingiverse. And I'll try to find the link to this, although I saved it a long time ago. Particularly with these print and price models, it's easy, particularly when the first layer's gone down, for they be, become detached from the bed or just not adhere as well. So the first thing you want to look at and change, and I do all the time, is under speed in Work Slicer. And I go ahead and turn on the advanced settings. So you can see everything. And the first thing I would change here is the first layer speed. Right now I have it set at 80. I think I'm going to take it all the way down to 30. And that will be slower, but that'll let me basically make sure that first layer is going down real good. Now let's just look at what the changes are here. So I'm just going to slice my plate at the 80. And this is showing one hour and 31 minutes. If I take it down to 30, let's see what that really changes. And it takes it up to about an hour and 32 minutes. So it's not that big of a change in time, but again, that helps with that, that first layer adhesion. So let's look at some other settings and see what other changes we can make in our slicer to help get the best adhesion possible. So the next setting I look at is both the bed temperature and the nozzle temperature. Now I'm using faster 3D printers, so I tend to go hotter, so that way the filament is flowing faster. And so in my case, I found the perfect temperature I use is 220 for PLA, and then I use 60 for the bed temp. Now I'm going to point out that you can go up here to the top in Orca Slicer, and there is a calibration for temperature. So I would suggest if you don't have an ideal temperature, go ahead and try that temperature test so you can find the best temperature for you. So now I have noticed that some profiles print a hotter temperature for the first layer, again, trying to get that better squish. I've stopped doing that and I just go with the same temperature throughout the print. But again, I am going a little hotter with the PLA towards the top of the temperature range. So that way I can get it to stick to the bed as best as possible. Now for these next settings, I think of these as adhesion boosters. And the first thing I would look at is when you're doing your line width on your first layer you want to make sure that the line width is bigger than the nozzle. In my case, I do 120% of the nozzle width, and that's the line that I found adheres the best. Now, I use percentages, and mainly I'm using percentages because the, if I change nozzles, I really just want to keep these sizes all proportion. So, like I said, on that first layer line width, I would do about 120. I'd look at if you're using a 0.4 nozzle, somewhere between 0.42 and 0.46. And again, that's in that 120% range. Now for our next setting, you want to make sure you have your flow rate correct, or in the case of Orca Slicer, flow ratio. Now you're going to do that via the calibration tests. And I've done several videos on those, and I'll link those above as well. If you have the proper flow ratio, you're getting just the right amount of filament. The last thing you need, particularly on that first layer, is to have under extrusion, where you're not getting a really good line laid down. The other thing you want to walk at is your layer height. You do not want a layer that's too thick. 
you actually want, you're concerned about getting that squish and getting that line pushed really close to the bed. Now, in my case, I usually choose a layer height between 0.24 and 0.3. In fact, I haven't used this printer in a while, so I'm just going to change this to a layer height of 0.24. And so that to me is a really good setting. It gives me that great squish. And you should try, again, messing around with the first layer height, the flow ratio, and again, that first layer height. Now, this next setting is more of conditional use. If you scroll down or under quality, there's under wall generation and walls and surfaces, there's a setting, only one wall on first layer. If you're doing a decorative piece such as this print in place, that's a good setting to enable. Now, if I'm doing a piece such as for my VZ bot I'm putting together, I want to turn this off because I want that piece to be as strong as possible. For this little toy, one wall in that first layer is okay. Something else to look at, and this is sort of the bazooka approach to fixing bed adhesion. You can go under other and then take a look at the brim type. I don't use a raft and I wouldn't recommend that, but let's look at brim types. Right now I have it set to auto. If I really want this to stick to the bed, I probably put on outer brim only. I'll make sure the object gap is set to zero. Brim width, I go with five. But the problem with this is I really don't like how this brim will be hard to get off. And if you notice underneath here on this print in place, it's covering everything. So that's going to take a little while for me to pick out. Now, a reasonably new setting is this painted. And I actually really like this setting, and I'm using this a lot now, particularly for structural pieces. So I've selected my model. I've turned it on painted. And if I click the brim ears up here at the top, I can auto-generate the brim or the, the ears, or I can lay them down just by finding a point and clicking. In my case, I've sort of broken down and I just use the auto placement. If I don't like those, I can hit remove all. I'm going to go with auto generate and then click on remove selected. And maybe I'm just going to delete some of these underneath. So we select them and I've deleted those in the middle. I'm going to delete one or two here so they're not overlapping. You can see that's a, a better balance, I think, than just using a brim. And it doesn't add much time, so it's well worth it. Also, these peel off really, really easily. One last setting you should always try in Orca Spicer, and maybe I should have done this one first, but I've loaded in the structural piece for the VZ bot, and you'll notice it just loaded in by default in this really awkward position. Now, if I select this piece, let me get rid of my unicorn, select this piece and go up here to the top and auto orient. Auto orient orients it where the most flat of the piece is on the bed. So again, that's one other way you can help with bed adhesion, make sure the flattest part of the model is actually touching the bed. So hopefully you found this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please post below. If you have any settings you use in Orca Slicer to help with bed adhesion, I'd appreciate if you let me know so I can take a look. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye.